as opposed to dynamics it really it took a while you know dynamics took a little bit of yeah. time catching up to just having the same yeah. um you know feel and you know yeah. punch that you used to get because with that with the analog counterpart because yeah. analog dynamics i mean which is such a non-linear transfer that the time constant that's right it's all in the side and chain and, yeah. yeah and um so the early digital ones were probably just very linear and right. didn't sound very good because it's uh I mean, one of the reasons that 1176 sounds so good is that um, is, is is that the just the gain reduction the the gain characteristics of the FET they use versus control voltage isn't linear. It's mm -hmm. um, um, you know, and then when when it releases mm -hmm. and the capacitor discharges and the voltage comes up, the release isn't a linear release. It goes like that, mm -hmm. and, it's, and all that kind of stuff just sounds real good or re really used to hearing it, mm -hmm. and. Um, so now a lot of the dynamic plugins really take that into account and I think do a really good job. Mm -hmm. well, what would you, for example, use as a main limiter on a, let's say, on a lead vocal? Is there something specific? Um, here? I've I used the, um, uh, the 1176 from UAD quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I use, if I want clean, Fab Filter again. That's uh -huh. a very clean, very good sounding limiter right. or compressor, I mean. And, um, um, uh, but I've been using lately because I really like the character of it. There's a PSP audio makes something called the Fat Presser, mm -hmm. which I think probably sounds more like an 1176 mm -hmm. than an 1176. Sure. You know I mean. uh, um, yeah. So, yeah. And um, and as far as a limiter, I, I like the um, I I use the Fab Filter Pro L all the time. Right. Right. Except in 5.1, I, the Avid Pro stuff is great because it's really the only plugins, as far as limiters, e, um, expanders, compressors, that um, that detect that the, whose detector looks at all the all the tracks and all the the five main tracks mm -hmm. ride together. So, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about reverbs. Um, you know, in the past, uh, I remember over Conway. I mean, you would always you'd have a couple of 2016s, you know, with the lids off. Just with the lids them. off and the magic yeah. markers holding the yeah. circuit card up so they work. Right. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, w what are your what are your favorite, you know, uh, reverb plugins right now? Are you using convolutions? Are you using more? M you know? uh, the convolution is uh, Altiverb 7. Uh -huh. um, they have some really nice convolutions with it. And also, I sampled my, my SP2016. Your stereo room. <laughs> yeah, stereo <laughs> room, room reverb, high density plate. Yeah, which and is available by Mick for a small fee. If you no, <laughs> no fee, no fee, but you have to put a trim plug in after because I was sitting in front of the computer and didn't realize one channel was a dB down and never did it again. So, well, yeah. <laughs> so, so. Um, yeah, but it, it worked out really well. And plus, sub the convolution uh, got the characteristic of the 2016 very close without the noise. Yeah, right. So. Yeah. So, um, so I used that, and then um, uh, there's couple very low cost reverb plugins I really love that's um, uh, Valhalla the mm. room in the plate All right um, fab filters it sounds like I do not endorse fab filter I just like their stuff <laughs> I have no deal with them yeah. uh, but their reverb is very interesting because graphically you can control the decay time uh, uh, versus frequency just like an EQ curve you could just say okay um, you, you have your average decay time and you say okay you want a little a little longer decay time at the top or shorter you can mm -hmm. y you have two graphs one for frequency response and one for decay time that mm -hmm. you can graphically manipulate and of course obviously the beauty with plugins you instantiate as many as yeah. you want and just yeah. uh, print them with your subgroups yeah yeah, yeah. so anybody want to you guys want to hear another track or actually you know what let's um open it up for a couple of questions and then we'll place a little more back and uh so um who's got the microphone because we want to be able to rec well okay i'll just I'll right, we're engineers. I'll repeat we're your deaf. question. Yeah, that's right. We're engineers. We're deaf. We need that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was first, I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he was first. The guy behind you. Notice it's really clear. Your bottom end, obviously, you take, you've taken a lot of care over a lot of years to get that amazingly tight sound. And is there any anything that you would recommend other than the playing itself? Right. right? That's one. That's the main thing. I that's think. the main thing. Yeah. Other than I think it's just, um, you know, once the, the mix is in perspective and almost everything's in there, you just have to carve some frequencies out, which usually turn out to be about, you know, 170 to 250, just out a little bit. Um, uh, and, you know, boost the, you know, boost the mid-range a little bit, compress that it's tight, but not with such a fast attack that, that it's, um, you know, the, the transient doesn't get, th get through. And, um, yeah, just stuff like that.